Good morning and happy, happy birthday to Drake Parks, who happens to be probably put him next to Zanna and you got two of the cutest one-year-olds and they're one day apart in birth. So happy, happy birthday to this precious little boy. And we want to show you some photos of he and his family and you might recognize his family. Actually, he gets an inside edge here because his uncle is my producer. So, you know, if you, if you got family connection, then you get a little bit of special treatment. And so Drake Parks, you are getting a little bit of special treatment and how precious. And I have to say, usually girls walk faster than boys or first, but Drake walked before Xana did. So happy, happy birthday, little boy. And there's his mean old uncle with him. And how sweet is that? Is that Uncle T? Yay! How cute, how cute, how cute. Happy, happy birthday to a precious, precious little boy. I think he's loved a whole bunch. A whole big bunch, kind of like baby Zanna is. And uh, what precious, precious, oh, what a precious, precious picture. How sweet is that? There's something about being those great grands that's really, really cool. So that is so precious. Oh my God, look at those eyelashes. Oh my gosh. How adorable. How cute is that? And I bet you there was a time he was trying to get in the water and I probably loved it. So how sweet, how sweet. His eyelashes are unreal. So cute, so cute, so cute, so cute. Happy, happy birthday, little man. That is precious. And he has, he has started uh, walking faster than Xana did. And that is one of those things you just don't know when they're going to walk. But that one walked a little bit faster. Just a little bit faster. And look what he got for his birthday. Oh my gosh, he's going to be a riding machine. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. He is, he is adorable. Cute, 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 cute. You know, it's really cool when you have family that has cameras and digital and can fix and can edit and can make. <laughs> and that's what it's about. So that baby's first birthday will not be forgotten. Not be forgotten. I have to say thank you to so many of y'all. Um, for seven days, a little tiny baby goat has been fighting to live. And um, we met some wonderful vets who helped out on Sunday, gave us emergency care. And sadly, this morning, at exactly the same age and time the little fellow was born, he crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Been a tough night, but it's been a good night because we got to spend as much time as possible taking care of him and trying to give him a chance. And to everybody who prayed for that little buddy, yes, he was precious. He was precious. Little Stormy has gone to meet his twin at the Rainbow Bridge, and um, it is what it is. Sometimes we don't understand life, and we don't understand. It's like yesterday. I spent time with a dear friend whose her brother was like my everything, and he died suddenly. And she and I both were just lost because... He was my director, he was my producer, he was my editor, he was my everything. And when he left this world, I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this without him. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. And she said, you know, my whole life has been taking care of mom and dad and helping Fred. And then all of a sudden, Fred is gone. Mom and dad are gone. And here I am. And so she and I have decided we're going to bond together and we're going to do things together to help each other. I'm so very fortunate that I have an, an avenue, a network, a whole bunch of just amazing people who have lifted me, helped me, and gotten me through so much. Well, yesterday she brought a friend with her. First time I met the lady, we're sitting there having lunch and just chit-chatting, and she said, what happened to your arm? And I told her, and she just kind of, she had just lost her daughter to melanoma. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And her daughter was perfectly healthy. And within just a very, very short time, melanoma took her life. And so she and I immediately bonded. And she shared a Facebook page with me. If you are battling melanoma, if you have something going on with your family, maybe if you lost a family member to melanoma, check out this Facebook page. It's called Melanoma Warriors. And I joined that last night and um, she said that has helped us so much to get through and to understand because melanoma is that evil, evil cancer. 
it either they get it the first time or it travels very, very rapidly and you have a lot to deal with. So when she told me, and her daughter was very young, I think 37 or something like that, and I was like, wow, how crazy is that? She was a teacher, um, she was an artist, she, she was amazingly busy and productive, and then she was gone. And we have to understand that today, this day is a gift. Take it as a gift, enjoy every single moment of this day. Being up all night, worrying about the little baby, crying about it, passing, you know, you can't change any of those things. And I said, why doesn't God just give us perfect bodies perfect animals, nobody has to die, nobody has to hurt. Well, that's not his plan and we have to accept his plan. Often we don't like it, but we have to accept his plan. Now, um, for the past couple of years, we have been asking y'all to pray for Jen. And Jen is uh, a little bit weak now, a little bit down, but still positive and still hopeful. And we need you to say a prayer for her because she's been battling cancer and it's a very rare, very weird, very crazy kind of cancer. We are seeing a lot of very rare, very weird, very crazy kinds of cancer. We don't know why they haven't solved this problem. There are so many genius personalities in the medical world. There are some fifth graders sitting there somewhere that's smart enough to solve the cancer problem it hasn't been solved. And every single day we hear a story of somebody passing. Now, see what's behind me on my chair? Do y'all see that red? I'm gonna show you the whole thing in a little while. But this is a gift that I got yesterday. It is from the 1996 Olympics. It was the jacket that belonged to my producer from Atlanta. And his wife, his wife, his sister brought it to me yesterday. And I was so honored. She said, you know that our Freddie loved Coca-Cola. But because he had kidney issues, he couldn't drink Coke. He only drank water. And she reminded me how important it was to check the acid level in the water that you drink. And I told her, I said, well, I'm drinking pure well water and it tested 100% positive. And she said, don't drink anymore until you test for the alkaline. And I said, I remember Fred telling me that. So there's something that we're doing to our body, the food, the processed meats, the I don't know what we're doing, but there's too much cancer, too much evil cancer showing up. And um, speak of evil, if Satan tries to come in your door, tell him not today, Satan. No, not today, Satan. Out of here, out of my way, do not do it to me. We could look at the negativity of what we see every single day and we could let it take us down, but we can't do that. We just can't do that. I've had about two years that I honestly thought I would never make it through it. And I did, I did. Your prayers, your love, your laughter, your time spent with me, Lisa Perry, can't tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate all the Bible verses you share every day. There's so many of you who helped me, touched me, lifted my spirits and um, you know, Every anniversary of the death of my child, y'all still help me through that very, very day. Every day of her birthday, which is Christmas Eve, y'all still help me. But at the same time, there's always evil showing up too. And that evil seems to take over. That evil seems to be, that just seems to consume everything. And that evil shows up looking in the form of whatever it is. And you're like, why is evil surrounding you? Why, why is evil there? We just have to say, not today, Satan. And uh, my friend Vicki has that coffee cup. And she said, I drink out of it every single day. Not today, Satan. We're not gonna let Satan do this. So even um, as you see this precious little innocent animal go to cross the Rainbow Bridge, there's a reason for all of this. As we see a 37 year old die of cancer, there's a reason for all of this. We don't understand it. We don't get it but we have to stay prayed up. And that's one thing I love about our audience. Y'all are prayer warriors and I love that about you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Today, I wanna share something very, very special with you. There is a um, family up in the North Market that their mom was my biggest cheerleader when I first came on the air. And she would call me daily and tell me, well, I want you to do this and this and this and this and this. She was my go-to and she was amazing. She was married to a wonderful, wonderful man and she kept saying, I wanna get Jack to come and do your show. And he wasn't ready and he couldn't talk about it. And it was his, his time in the war. He just couldn't talk about it. 
and she would call me again and she'd say, I think he's almost ready to talk about it. Then she would share videos with me. Then she would share pictures with me. And then one day, this precious man and his two sons came here to ETC and we did a program with Bill Sinyard. Bill Sinyard now goes up to their church to Harbor Ministries and sings um, at least once a year and just loves the family, loves everything about them. They actually all grew up in Cartersville at the Mill Village where Bill grew up. And so it just made it amazing and such a great friendship. This is a very small world, although it's very big. We, I have friends in Pennsylvania that pray for me every day. I have friends in California who pray for me every day. We have friends in so many different areas and thank God for those friends because they get us through so much to each and every one of you who have helped me through this. Tomorrow, I have some more tests. Tomorrow, they are very in-depth. Last Friday, it was very invasive. But we're gonna, get to the, we're gonna get to the end and find all the answers that we're looking for. And then I'll know exactly what path I'll be taking. <clears throat> and I said I haven't planned any guests for the last couple of weeks because I have a lot of medical things going on where they call and then I have to get in, have to get labs, have to get this, have to get that. So I just said, I don't want to have to say, hey, I'm going to have to cancel you today. But by the end of next week, I hope that life is back to normal and I know exactly what path I'll be following. And I know that you'll follow it with me. So as you always have, thank you so very, very much. Now today we're going to share a visit. You love this family. You love these people. Everybody loved Papa Jack Bryson. He and Joyce were the pillars of the community from Epworth to Morganton to um, McKaysville to Blue Ridge, you name it. If you live at Campbell Cove, you can thank Joyce Bryson for that. She's gone to be with the Lord, but you just say a prayer and say, thank you, Joyce. What an amazing, amazing family. And so today, I think it's very important that I share that with y'all. And I'm also going to end today's program with a beautiful song. I don't think anything says exactly what we need to say in America today more than how great they are. And I think that's very important because he is great and he is going to get us through whatever we're facing. And a lot of folks are facing a lot of stuff. It was like when I sat down to have lunch yesterday, I had no idea that I was going to be meeting a lady who had just buried her daughter to melanoma. And then when she asked about my arm and I was like, oh my gosh, isn't that strange? Is that a weird coincidence? No, that's God. That's just God. So he's watching out for us every single day. Now, this is my little book that Dawn gave me, and I think it's very important because Dawn always says, Mama, speak the positive, don't speak the negative. So this is today's thought for the day. Be someone who finds something good in each day, then give it to others. Even though today it's been a rough night, the little baby had to go to, to cross that rainbow bridge, which was very, very hard, it's going to be a good day. We're going to plan for it to be a good day. I want you to sit back and I want you to remember and reflect on what it was like. Maybe your dad, maybe your granddad was in the Korean War. Maybe they couldn't talk about it when they came home. But we're going to share a very, very special interview. It took us years to get this interview done. And when Papa Jack was ready, he was ready. His voice came with him to support him. It was a very, very hard day for him. But I'm so thankful because not very long after that, he went to be with Jesus. And I'm very, very fortunate that we have these files, we have these archives, and today you're going to get to enjoy a visit with one of Blue Ridge's best, Papa Jack Bryson. Okay, today is a day I've looked forward to. I've dreaded because I know that it's going to be a tough day to get Papa Jack through some of the things. You boys, David, Wally, you took your dad on a trip that you really, really were excited about. To where? Washington, D.C. What did he want to go see? Well, I, he, we wanted him to see the uh, all the monuments, mm -hmm. but especially the Korean War monument. Right. Uh, I had taken my grandson two times in the last, th Marty and I had taken my grandson two times the last three years and spent two weeks both times. And Wally and I talked about it, we knew we could not get Dad there for two weeks. Yeah. Dad's like me, about three-day trip, that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> Mom always says, you don't your dad go anyway, don't tell him until you're getting in a car. But, uh, Good plan. We were, we were afraid to do that. So, uh -huh. uh, Wally and I, we, well, about three weeks, I guess, we planned it and pulled it off. Uh -huh. It's a okay. neat place. 
place. Yeah, yeah. Bill's been there. He brought back some photos. Now you happen to have about 400 photos. We're going to share some today. Yeah, we do. We may not share all of them, but we're going to share some. Now I've never been to Washington D.C. Can you give us an idea for a person who's never been there? How amazing it is to pull up and see. I can't imagine it. You told me that it is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it is. Your first trip there, what did you think? Well, I went when I was a child. Matter of fact, Mom. So it didn't amount to much when you were a child. And I think back, I think, I think back of that trip, and it really didn't. I was 12 years old, uh -huh. and of course Wally was three weeks old. Um, mother said, we're going to Washington, D.C., whether Wiley's a baby or not. So you were, what, <laughs> two and a half or three weeks old. So his first trip, he doesn't remember a whole lot. But, it, uh -huh. you know, as a child, it was just a big place. But to go back this many years later, mm -hmm. knowing the number of people that had lost their lives, you know, especially through the memorials. Right. And uh, not just the memorials, it was also a, uh, it's there to honor those who came back alive, not just those who lost their life there. Right. And yeah, it brings tears to your eyes to watch the veterans as they go around oh. and do their things. But Wally and I talked about it, and we wanted Dad to be, when Dad was there last, there were, there were a few memorials, but nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So we wanted Dad to see it. And uh, it was a man thing. We yeah. left, we yeah. left a niece and mom at home. <coughs> <coughs> okay, I want to ask you something. Wally, do you remember, are, were you alive during the Vietnam War? Yes, I was born in 1965. Okay, so about toward the end of it, okay. I remember the day the POWs came home. Do you remember things like that? Yes, I remember watching it on the news, but I didn't learn the significance of it till later. Right. But I can remember seeing the planes land and various things from the news coverage. Right. Well, I think television opened children's eyes. There's my generation didn't have all the coverage that we had, so I didn't know a whole lot about that. But I can remember the 60s, and I can remember Vietnam ending, and I can remember the POWs coming home in the 70s. I can remember those things. Your dad has an amazing memory. He remembers 60 years ago. How old were you, Papa Jack, when you went to Korea? <laughs> I was 20 years old. At 20 years old, you left the village over in Cartersville, Georgia, where you grew up. Tiny, well, I was tiny 19 town. when I joined the Army. Okay. Uh, sworn in November the 1st, 1950. Talk about going from that tiny town <clears throat> to what is the city you went to to go to Korea? Where did you fly out of? Uh, didn't fly. Caught a boat. A uh, boat? Yes. Where'd you uh, catch a boat in Georgia? Uh, didn't know. To go to go to basic training, I caught a train and went to basic training. Okay. From where I finished my basic training after a seven-day leave, uh, went to California on a troop train and got on a boat and rest is history. Now, the time from going from here to California on a train took how long? Uh... Gosh, I don't know how many days it was. You know, it'd be three hours today. If you were a military man today, leaving Fort Rucker and going to Pendleton, is Pendleton in California? Camp Pendleton is a marine base in okay. California. <coughs> three we hours. Went. Three hours. It didn't take you three hours on a train, did it? No, it took about, uh, I don't know, it, it didn't take as long as it did to go from uh, Pier 91 in California to Yokohama, Japan, it took 17 days. It took about half that going to going west. 17 days yeah. on a boat? On a boat. First time away from home? Yes. Went to Florida in 1947 for the first time out of the state of Georgia, wow. I guess. I'd been to Alabama before. I had a brother live there. Alabama doesn't count. We know oh, that. It, it, counts. <laughs> it counts with me. Some good days in Alabama. Well, you were stationed at Fort Rucker during when a period of time. When I came back from Korea, I was stationed at Camp Rucker, it was okay. then, and finished my time training troops. You there. went over as a private? Yeah. Is that right? And came back what? Uh, sergeant First Class, okay. the old tech sergeant. Does that mean you were a good guy when you were there? <laughs> means I was a fine guy. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, yeah. You earned how many stripes? Five. Wow. Five. Wow. Uh, now, I've seen that uh, memorial in Washington that they're talking about, the Korean War Memorial. Yeah. What did you think about that memorial? Well, it, uh, it brought back a lot of thoughts and memories, uh, and it looked so real, it's like going back in time. It's kind of an eerie you know, sight to me yeah. because of the guys in the raincoats and the, you know. Oh, yeah. Those ponchos and 
all the weapons I, I I literally inspected every weapon every man had, you know, in that group <laughs> as we looked at it. Now we saw it in the daylight, and the awesome thing we saw, and of course we walked. I don't know how many miles in three days. We walked everywhere in the rain and whatever. But at night, it was awesome. It was awesome. You could see so much more of it and the wall yeah. uh, that we saw there. As Vietnam uh, Memorial had the wall, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 59,600 odd names on there. Yeah. yeah. The World War II Memorial was just an awesome sight. Oh, yeah. What did you think about yeah. that one? Oh, I, I, I thought it was, I remember World War II like it's yesterday. And I, and I can't remember what I had for lunch. And that did amaze me this weekend talking to you. You remembered so many things yeah. from 60 years ago. Yeah. And, and you made a statement a couple of times this weekend. You said, well, it's been a long time, but you have an amazing memory of that. Good memories and bad memories, both? Both, yeah, yeah. Friendships that last in a lifetime? Yes, yes. Some. Uh -huh. uh, especially now, more of the friendships that that I've been uh, involved in uh, were made after I came back from Korea during the war and stationed at uh, Camp Rooker, Alabama. Uh, we still visit uh -huh. family in Florida that we've known since 1952. Wow. You wow. know. And it's, it's an amazing journey, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought a lot of times about uh, making a military career. I had a good opportunity and for advancement and whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't conducive to family life. And uh, by the way, speaking of Alabama, uh, David's an Alabama native. He was born in Count Rooker, Alabama. He was. Yeah, he I was. I hadn't told so. everybody in Fannin <laughs> County that. <laughs> And I, I tell them that, Alabama you know, they just them. laugh, uh -huh. you know. Well, says we thought something was wrong with well, him. Well, we're glad you came home and did not make a military career because you made one of the most amazing families in this community. You happen to have a variety of children uh, from a female pastor as your daughter, Denise. That's very unusual. You happen to have a young man here who steps up to the plate. And can you cook hash browns? Wally, mm, can you can cook a lot of hash ever. browns? I can, but if it gets down to me cooking, we're in big trouble. I <laughs> <laughs> you own three huddle houses, Chatsworth, Georgia, Cedar Bluff, Alabama, and Rainsville, Alabama? Center, Alabama. Center, yeah. Alabama. That's right, yeah. Now, how long and why did you end up in Alabama? We know David was born there and had the sense to get out. Why did you go there and stay? <laughs> <laughs> His wife, his, too, yeah. Yeah, but his wife is watching this. So uh, yeah. okay, I, well, uh, <laughs> I graduated from Georgia Southern in 1987, and uh, David and his college roommate were involved in some pizza places, pickup and delivery. And so uh, David and I decided to open some of those restaurants, and after probably six months of looking for locations, uh, we ended up finding a very good location in Rainsville, Alabama. And so I moved over there and met a girl. The rest, the rest is, is history. history yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got um, the location in Rainsville is right across from the high school? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Plainview Great high school. location. Right. We were looking for something closer to the red light. And uh, I was fortunate enough to work for an old football coach one time that said he'd rather be lucky than good. Uh -huh. And we looked for months for a place closer to the red light. And then this lot came up across from the high school out of the blue. And it turned out to be the perfect place for a huddle house. It's uh -huh. across from the Coliseum and baseball and football fields and uh, the industrial parks behind me. So uh -huh. I was very fortunate to stumble into that because it was certainly not by our actions or on purpose that we were there but it worked out and uh, they built a new road beside us and so didn't hurt your feelings any did no it was great <laughs> it, it was great the, my question is does mom and dad get to eat for free when they come they do if uh, if i'm there if i'm not there <laughs> if i'm not there they won't leave without paying they, uh, they're, they're real, a little on the stubborn side <laughs> i will tell you hard, that about both of them <laughs> they're real hard to swing this old fashioned that, but if yeah. i'm there i can sneak them out but uh -huh. if, if I'm not there, they won't divulge their identification, and they they pay. So. <laughs> now you do have a very very close family, and even though you're in Alabama, <clears throat> it's quite often your mom will say, "We're going over to see Wally. We're going over to see the kids." 
Even though you're in Alabama, y'all are still very close, aren't you? We are, and uh, there's probably not usually two or three weeks goes by that uh, David or some of the family, Denise or mom and dad's there or we're here. Or, mm -hmm. uh, How long does it take to get from here to Rainsville? Before the rock slide? Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if you can go through the Okoye, it takes about... Uh, two hours and 15 minutes to get from my house to mom and dad's. Uh -huh. but now it takes about <coughs> three hours if I could. The what if way. you go through Resaca that way? Is there a better way? What, how do you go now since the rock slide? Um, Chattanooga to Dalton to oh, okay. uh, bypass Chatsworth on the bottom side and come across the mountain into Ella J. Okay. Well, we want folks to go and see you because. Um, you do have an amazing family, and I saw that Saturday night. I was warned when we had dinner with y'all, there were 17, 18 of us. It was a very quiet, very cordial, very, you know, everybody was having conversations with everybody. And, and your Joyce had said, this will scare you to death when all these Brysons get together. It was wonderful. It was wonderful to see the little kids. Now, is it Tucker, your son? Yes. Who loved the little baby, and he sat there and played with the baby. Everybody just gets along great. Is it always that way, and has it always been that way? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> actually, actually, it has been pretty good. Uh-huh, yeah. <clears throat> We've all learned how to talk and listen at the same time, so nobody gets offended when, uh -huh. when they're asking And I understand talking. that different views, um, but not big arguments. You know, Mom has one view, y'all have a different view, and, and we all, and, and just discussions, but not big arguments. You ain't so. talking political stuff, are you? Just a little. Oh. Well, <laughs> Wally, Wally and I, I think, do better with Mom than uh, Denise. Something uh -huh. about two women discussing things they disagree on. <laughs> they, but they know when to quit talking, I guess. Wow. Okay, let's talk about your mom was my first guest that somebody said, well, somebody can hold a candle to Sherry Martin. Your mom has done everything. She has been involved in so much and con continues to be today. And she's 70, Papa Jack, she's 76. 39. Yeah, 39. So I right. can't say that she's 76. <laughs> She'll have to she tell is you 76. that. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you that. And still busy, busy, busy. Is that what makes them look so young? They're so active and so much? I guess. It, they, they've always been active in uh, whatever mom wanted them to be active in. <laughs> <laughs> when dad outgrew softball, then mom kind of took over. He played, okay. a lot of, played a lot of softball when we were younger. But uh, one of the neat things that, that we do at the house is... Uh, Make it a point with cell phones and, and telephones to stay in contact with each other. Uh -huh. Well, you know, we talk to each other, you know, a lot uh -huh. and, and text a lot. But without that, it would be much more difficult because when Wally first moved over there, our phone bills were pretty high. Yeah. yeah. They were, there wasn't a lot of options. You know, uh -huh. It was before the split up. But now yeah. it's a whole lot easier to be able to do that. Now, talk about opposites attracting. <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> you were from a family different than Joyce's family. Entirely. Entirely. Yes. And she told me that. And she said, you know, her dad was a pastor, went to church every time the doors opened, yeah. and many, many churches. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your family. Uh, we had a family. Did you that's have a, a little, large that's family? That's a little bit. Okay. Did yeah, there was eight of us. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you uh, the things that I remember. Uh, my kid brother, Bill, I think he's 73 or 4 And I've now. met Bill, yeah. Uh, Place when he was born in 1936, my mom had a stroke during labor and childbirth, and she wow. was she was uh, paralyzed, uh, invalid, all the way through World War II. And uh, there was eight of us all together, and we moved. Uh, we didn't have a lot of anything. We were mill workers, you know. My dad worked all the time. We. And we lived uh, in a... Was it the Adco building? No, no. Yeah. This was at Tryon, Georgia. Okay. And we lived between the wagon bridge and the railroad bridge right on the uh, Chattooga River. You know, six miles, I think, five or six miles uh, above Somerville, Georgia. Right. Now, all of us kids were born there except one. My older brother was born on a farm. My dad was sharecropping farmer until he was 20 years old and went into the the textile mill to work and uh, we left there and moved to Calhoun after World War II had started and lived there during World War II. I was a freshman in Calhoun High School in 1945 or 6, I forget exactly. 
And uh, then we moved from there to ATCO, and I was 15, I think. And from there on, it's And I've history. seen photos of a 15-year-old Jack Bryson. You were so <laughs> cute. No wonder well, Joyce got her head turned. Well, uh, the, uh, the way Joyce got in the family, or the way I got into Joyce's family, her dad was a pastor, and he was called from here to pastor the Atco Baptist Church in Cartersville, Georgia. That's a good year meal, the village. It had everything involved in it. They mm -hmm. had had the homes. They had their own police force. They had, Bill knows. Mm -hmm. I knew Bill's mom when she was just a little bitty girl mm -hmm. and that whole family. And so when Joyce uh, and family moved to Cartersville in 1948, the rest is history, you know. We... Wow. We had a date, and we had another date, and so on. And I joined the Army before we got married. Uh, we were engaged, and uh, I came home on leave, and we were together. We got married, and we were together seven days before I went overseas, and then stayed there until we moved up here. Now, what's it like today to be, you are, you're the head honcho, Joyce? appears to be, but you are the head of a large family that is so involved, and, and today you still work in the school system. I sub at uh, Fanning County Middle School. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked there for 12 years, and uh, I really enjoyed that time. And I had, the kids yeah, I had a, I, I really am not acquainted with the kids now like I was when I saw them come and go right on through, my grandchildren mm -hmm. and all, but uh, that... I consider that the best employment that I ever had, right there. Mm -hmm. It taught me more about how the system works. I never had any inkling of an idea uh, what was involved in running a school system and what have you, even though David was teaching, right. uh, Marty was teaching, and uh, it's just, uh, just awesome to think about what goes into keeping an organization like a school system going. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot, I enjoyed a lot of it, and I still enjoy going back. They now, treat me like I'm family. <coughs> they do, and know? they love you. David retired from the Georgia school system, yes. walked across the street, and went to work in Pope County, <clears throat> Tennessee. Well, I turned right out of my driveway instead of left now, so it, it's nice. Why didn't you give up teaching? What What was in you? Was it something maybe he taught you, maybe your mom taught you? Why did you want to go back into teaching? Well, one thing Dad didn't say about his family is is uh, they work. Uh -huh. I mean, they, Amazing they, work ethics. Uh, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't ever retire. His brothers worked, you know, uh -huh. and his... Just one for the state highway, one in the banking business, one, you know, they, they just all, his sisters, they all worked. It was not one of those things that was, it's expected, you know, it was expected. And uh, I guess I'm not ready to retire. Plus, my wife has four more years. And she Why kinda, would you want to be sitting at home alone? She said I wouldn't be. Yeah. So she yeah. said I need to continue what I love doing. I love to teach, and I started out teaching fifth and sixth grade. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what I'm doing now, and it is a lot of fun. I still enjoy it and very much. The day I don't enjoy it, I'll go You're home. Gone. I'll yeah. go home. Yeah. Do you think you've made a difference in some children's lives? Oh, I think so. I, uh, I, if you if you're in teaching because you love kids, which is why you should be there, right? Uh, you will make a difference in a lot of people's lives. I, I look back and there's particular teachers at, at Cartersville that I can uh, tell you made a tremendous difference in my life. I was in the city school system there, but it wouldn't have mattered if I'd been the county. Are y'all? I know David's older than you. Are you close to Wally's age? Well, I'm 47. How are you? 44. Yeah. Did you know uh, Coach Matthew Hill? Uh, no. no. I did. Uh, Dad, Dad knew several Summer of those. Summer High School. Yeah, he passed away uh, last year. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, so you, that. you were talking about integration earlier. That's one of the, the highlights of, of my life is we integrated without any <clears throat> issues at all. All these other communities were having all of these problems mm -hmm. integrating. Yeah. And Ray Hill was our superintendent at the time. And yeah, we integrated without without any problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the old high school, the, the Summer Hill High School mm -hmm. was now the middle school, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10, 11, and 12th is Cartersville City Schools. And we had we had one little uh, 
one little parade kind of deal or march or whatever you want to right. call it. Very peaceful, very very polite, and there was no no problem at all. And, yeah, uh, Summer Hill and Park and Carterville was the black community, uh -huh. and then of course you cross the railroad tracks over here, and you had the white folks living right. over there. And then we started going to school. I went to Summer Hill for a couple of years. Yeah, and, and I'm sure you remember talking about memories. The four way four-way diner. Oh, it's uh, still there. It, yeah, in Cartersville. still there. But yeah. I, I remember as a child where the, where the blacks got their orders in the back. Oh. They ate in the back. And then I also remember as a high school student where they got to go in the front door. Right. So you had asked mm -hmm. earlier, you asked Bill, did he live that time? Well, you know, we lived it. Some right. of my best friends were, were black. And, yeah. and right. I can, being white, I considered myself to be one of their best friends. Right. It was it was, it was good. Well, when we left Atlanta, Mother came to Jasper and opened a restaurant in what was the Archer Court Motor Home, and, and they had a little restaurant building there, and, and the blacks continued to come to the back door, and Mother would meet them at the back door and say, if you want something deep, march yourself around front and walk in my front door. And she met some resistance because she, you know, she was serving at Martin Luther King's home the night he was assassinated because she worked for the company that sent food out there and sent volunteers, and we were all involved in that. We didn't know that that wasn't the way America was supposed yeah. to work. And, and so when she came to Jasper, she met some resistance because she would greet people at the back door and say, no, I'm not fixing your plate out this back door. Walk yourself around front. And they're like, no, Miss Hazel, I can't do that. And she said, oh, yeah, if you go eat my stuff today, you're going to do that. And she'd make them go around front. It was, it was a little bit tough. I never forget the story that Henry Aaron talked about when they played baseball. And he was in the late 50s, early 60s. And they played a game up in Washington, D.C., and him and a couple of the other guys on the team uh, went into a restaurant to eat, and they didn't want to serve them. And here's a here's a famous pro baseball player didn't want right. to serve them. And when they got done eating, he saw them take the dishes to the back and heard them slamming the dishes on the floor and breaking them. <gasps> no. Yeah. I don't get that. So, now he grew up in an era. Uh, he could tell us more about that, I'm sure. But how do how were the black soldiers treated during the Korean War. I was going to ask you that because I saw a photo of you and you had a black soldier in a photo with you. Was there, was there separation in I, the time of service? Uh, not well in training. I was in training with all white. Uh, there was a black uh, outfit, uh, 24th Night Fighters they called it. Now that's that's not to be confused with the 24th Infantry Division that I served in in mm -hmm. Korea, but uh, they split them up and put them in different units, and I met a couple of them that came into our unit, mm -hmm. and that man you saw was probably one of them. And then at Fort Rooker, Alabama, Camp Rooker, when I came back down there, uh, the combat engineer battalion that I was in didn't have any blacks in it, when I first went there, it was a National Guard outfit that uh, was being phased out as far as training, active duty, and uh, we set up to give advanced combat engineer training. Then they sent in uh, one one black company commander there, sharp man, knew what he was about, and then uh, several soldiers. We had 15 came into my platoon at one time. But we didn't have any problems. No. We yeah. didn't have any problems. They were, they were good soldiers. They were sharp, and uh, they excelled in in uh, a lot of areas that uh, white soldiers were lax in, mm -hmm. and vice versa. You know. Papa Jack, were you drafted or did you? No, go? I joined. Okay. I joined. Was it a during? Was it during the time there was an active draft? Yes. Okay. Oh yes. One of my friends that died last week or two weeks ago in Carterville, Georgia was drafted after I came home and was, uh, the war was ended in 53, 1953, and I went in in 1950, six months after the war had started, and uh, went directly overseas from training and then came back and trained troops the rest of my enlistment, and the war was over during the Eisenhower administration, 1953. Let me ask you something, in the pictures I saw this weekend, what was the, were there trees where you were serving? Because it looked almost, it reminded me a little bit of Copper Hill. <clears throat> Wasn't a lot of greenery anywhere. No, is that pretty no, much what the atmosphere uh, was? Most of the, most of the timbers were either blown up. Well, now in the south, it was rice paddies. And then when you got further north toward the 38th parallel, and they cut all of those timbers and made bunkers out of them, trench lines and what have you. Uh, wasn't, a, wasn't a lot, but. 
I went through soil twice or three times, and uh, it was it wasn't you couldn't even tell what it was. You know, it's blown all to heck, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a metropolis now. It's an yeah. amazing place, they mm -hmm. say. But, Have you ever uh, wanted to go back? No, no, okay. no. I really haven't. Uh, I uh, I was I was on the Eastern Central Front to start with, and uh, then we. We did uh, battalion reserve duty, and I, and I was transferred out of an infantry thing into a pioneer and ammunition platoon support team, handling all the uh, ammunition and supplies for the front line crew. And that don't mean we weren't on the front lines and in harm's way. We were quite often, but that was uh, most of my stay there was in that, and that's how I picked up an MOS number that was combat engineer. And when I came home and was stationed in a combat engineer unit at Camp Rooker, I requested a transfer to the infantry because I didn't know that, but I'd handle a lot of explosives, uh, dynamite and C3 stuff that they used, you know, primarily to destroy uh, booby traps and mm -hmm. un, un, unexploded incoming artillery rounds. We just did a lot of things. And uh, they said, no, said, we're going to send you on temporary duty to Fort Belvoir, Virginia for three months, and you're going to combat engineer school, said, because we need your expertise uh, that you'll have when you come back to help write lesson plans and train troops. And that's what I did. So... At the time I was there, uh, Joyce went to Cleveland, Ohio, where my folks lived at that time and stayed uh, most of that three months. And uh, I've been to Washington and never saw it, really, mm -hmm. uh, actually going through it and what have you. But uh, a friend of mine from that was in school there with me lived in Akron, and we would, on the weekends, hit the Pennsylvania Turnpike. We, we would... Uh, hitchhike until we got to that turnpike and then we'd hitchhike to Akron and uh, his dad ran a uh, cabaret, you know, a nightclub type thing and I remember a beautiful brand new nice automobile that he'd take me on to Cleveland in and him come back, you know. Wow. That's one of the good things I remember. But I enjoyed my time in the military very much. Let's talk about the difference in the weapons you dealt with and the weapons of today. I have no idea what Can they have Can you even today. imagine the no. difference? Yeah. No. What about helicopters? Did you have helicopters then? Well, the only helicopters that I saw were the ones that came in to fly the wounded back. Okay. And they had that little uh, coffin rack on it, you know, the our stretcher rack, a okay. litter they called it. And that's the only helicopters I saw. They used them a time or two. I've read since then you know, uh, advertisement for one or two of the first helicopter uh, fences, you know. Mm -hmm. But I never did see them. We walked everywhere we went. Well, right now we're going to show some photos that David brought. This is a PowerPoint with photos of what? Well, the, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Dad never had ridden on a, I don't know, if, I don't think he minds me telling you, a subway. And, uh, I've never ridden on a subway. Oh, listen, Still today, never he, ridden on he's a subway. Found I have out, no desire to he's ride found on a out he don't want to ride one looking backwards because he oh. makes him sick. He, he's wow. got to look where he's going. Okay. Right? <laughs> but anyway, there there are the memorials there of just you know things that we did there. There is a there's a shot in there that that I actually took earlier in the summer. We were there when they had the shooting at the uh, Jewish memorial, the Holocaust mm -hmm. Museum. Mm -hmm. We were there the day before, wow. and we were there the day after, and uh, they're. There, you know, the fly and the flags at half mask and that stuff, uh -huh. which you know you you mentioned earlier. There there is still uh, there's still a lot of hatred in this country toward yeah. other nationalities yeah. and other yeah. races. And the man who did that shooting died last week, and uh -huh. he was 80 something years old. Just walked up and shot and killed a black wow. man. He didn't have a clue wow. who it was. Well, yes. you know, this weekend the internet has made our life better. It's made our life not better at some points. This weekend, I had an idea that I wanted to type in. My grandfather was Jewish, German Jewish, and I typed in his name, and I got copies of 1952 grandparents' divorce decree and all the things that were used in it because it is now on law books and has been used quite often. 
Then I typed in my father's name, and Papa Jack heard a little bit about my dad in this um, seminar we did, and it had him in the newspaper in St. Petersburg, Florida. This is from the 40s, the late 40s. So the Internet today has made it possible for great memories to be kept. You know, it just it blew my mind. I was sitting there reading all this transcript, and I thought, wow. The Internet has also made it possible for soldiers to get in touch and to keep in touch. Now, that's something your mom loves to do, the Internet. Yes. Has she contacted any of Dad's old Korean buddies? I uh, No, but now my daughter's mother-in-law spent quite a bit of hours on the Internet and wound up on Facebook and located one of her her husband's, he, he was in Vietnam, David Bigham mm -hmm. was in Vietnam, and so Darlene spent, I don't know how long, and it took a long time, but located the daughter on Facebook of someone he he actually was with in Vietnam wow. and arranged a reunion just over over Christmas uh -huh. and totally surprised both of them involved. So wow. now mom has not done that, but people in the family or extended family have done uh -huh. this. You know, one of, one of these pictures uh, shows what I think is interesting, shows the... Uh, statues that you're talking about at the Korean War Monument mm -hmm. and using the inter using the internet and uh -huh. the sources we have we found that there are 19 statues there and the reason there's 19 statues is when the sun hits it it shows a reflection of those 19 statues on the Korean wall behind it oh, which wow. represents the 38th parallel which divides North Korea and South Korea so the thought that goes behind these memorials must yeah. be unbelievable. Uh -huh. Those first several shots were of the World War II Memorial, which is a gorgeous place, granite. It, and it's divided into the Pacific and the Atlantic, yes. you know, conflicts, and it shows Did them all. Did you know some of those names, Papa Donald Pat? W. Queen Donald from Point. Epworth, Georgia, oh, wow. died in Vietnam. Wow. Uh, about in the middle, about in the middle of the war. He, he lived right down uh -huh. the road from, from us, and our grandfather did, was part of his funeral one night. Wow. That tribute to the nurses in Vietnam was probably the most moving picture that uh -huh. I think. You see one nurse praying uh -huh. and uh, one nurse is looking for the helicopter to come in and get them and the other nurse has her fist in a wound. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All that's right there in the line too. Uh, right. The Washington Mon Monument and the uh, Mall and the Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial along with the U.S. Capitol. Well, I've always heard that D.C.'s traffic is horrendous. How did you cope with that? Did you know your way around enough that you made it easier for everybody? Well, we didn't drive anywhere. Okay. We took the monorail. We went there to only see what we went to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because we wanted Dad to see it. And when I went earlier with my grandson, we did drive three years ago over to Baltimore. And now mm -hmm. for $1.75, you can ride round trip, a light rail from Washington, D.C. to uh to Baltimore, uh -huh. and you can just you can get around pretty much anywhere you want to go. You got to figure that system out, or you'll be going backwards and frontwards and spend a lot of time. Oh, wow. There's there's no need to drive. Yeah, okay. You can get around. They got trolley there too. You can take. Mm -hmm. We did that a time or two. Beautiful. That gentleman in the wheelchair was part of the Freedom Flight. There were uh -huh. veterans all over that gentleman there. There are veterans all over uh, Washington that were a part of the Freedom Flight where they bring folks to see the monuments and it was very good. There's the Korean War Memorial. Now did you go to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? Yes we did. Okay, tell me a little bit about that. What was that like? Matter of fact, there are two tombs of the night. We were not aware of this and we went to, uh, at the top of it, there's a Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers for some uh, Civil War deaths that came from in the picture of that's in here too but it's uh -huh. up next to the to the home uh well matter of fact whose home is that dad <laughs> robert e lee robert e lee yeah, and robert e lee and their plantation and they lost it when he came south with the civil war but in that civil but war. in that front yard of that is the tomb of the unknown soldiers where they gathered bodies and stuff up in the civil Why war that were not i think they're concrete okay <clears throat> they may not be, but they look like concrete. Uh, I don't remember. That right there was a moving thing. That This was put there. We think that a lot of times things are forgotten when we go fight a war somewhere. Uh -huh. And the class, uh, it shows in a minute, I believe it was 1964 from Seoul University. Wow. They made, a trip up, they, well, they made a trip over here, and they left that at the monument thanking uh, the veteran. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's not the forgotten war. Yeah. Yeah. to the ones that live free That's right. today. 
you got to go, Sherry. I, I really want make. to go I'm to Washington, D.C. Mother went in the 60s. And then again in the 70s, I never got to go, and I always, she went during the cherry blossom time, you know, and it was just so beautiful, and she brought home pictures that just didn't even look real, but I would love to go there. But that's not a one-day trip. you gotta, yeah. you got to spend a few days there. No, and you need to do some research, because you have to have a ticket to get in some things. They don't mm -hmm. charge you, but they, mm -hmm. they, you have to get there early in the morning to have a ticket mm -hmm. to get in some things. That's you, beautiful. You could spend almost an entire day, or at least a good half day, in Arlington Memorial. Somebody That's true. Yeah, we we yeah. spent we spent quite a bit of time yeah. there. We took the trolley because we weren't trying to kill Dad. We was trying to let him see things he yeah. hadn't seen. We walked yeah. umpteen miles. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I wore out a walking cane. <laughs> but we watched the changing of the guard twice at the Tomb mm -hmm. of Unknown Soldiers. That's amazing. And that'll just yes, uh, that'll yeah. bring tears to your eyes. Yeah. 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 Especially when you hear taps in the background. Some other right. guys are being buried across the way. Yeah. They had maybe six or eight funerals that day and uh, mm -hmm. every every direction you turn they were buried some were recent that's recent a alabama state bird did you say yeah well, we, never, we never did figure out what that was <laughs> we were trying to figure it out we thought if we brought it back somebody would know what uh -huh, it was uh -huh. but you know one of the things that we found to be real interesting is we looked went down to where the guards you know the history of some of the guards uh -huh. and several of those guards have been killed past guards were killed like in vietnam and you know other other battles so right. they just don't guard the tomb and then go away right they go fight their battles did you learn a little else. bit about the history of what it's like to be a guard and what lifestyle they have to live in order to do that this is an amazing and everybody ought to read that yes. and, and if they earn yes. the pen if they earn oh. the pen oh. they can they cannot use profanity right they cannot partake of an alcoholic beverage right it, they've got a code of conduct to live by the rest of their life or yeah. they can lose that pen yeah and you got your waist size can't be any yeah that's the wall at the uh, that's the korean wall there what it shows at the korean wall is every branch of service is etched in that <clears throat> and when dad and i were talking to the forest service guy there he said, our national parks guy, he said the amazing thing is they did this and then they poured water on it, <clears throat> they etched it, and they couldn't see it. <clears throat> so they etched it again. They poured water on it again, still couldn't see it clear, so they went all over that etching three times because they said rain or shine, they wanted anybody who visited this wall uh -huh. to be able to see it. So he said it was quite a, quite an undertaking. And is I'm there a number? Because the first day we were there, it was raining pretty good. Uh -huh. Is there a number? Is Has there ever been a documentation of how many people have stood in front of the Vietnam Wall? Because I think when it first was finalized, that was the big thing. Oh, look at that. Uh, no. I they, wonder if there's a number. Of they'll give you an estimation of the number of people that have visited. Uh -huh. And they said a lot of them were return visits. And uh, there's volunteers there that will help you do etchings, you know, like when you put right. a, just a piece of I paper on there. Of those, yeah, yeah of, of those things that are there. Yeah. But we found out that there was, when they built the Vietnam War, there was a, there was a conflict there because there was nothing there to honor the living. Uh -huh. So that's when they went back and built, they put in two of those statues, the one of the three men standing that are look like they're in battle uh -huh. and the one of the nurses who that is that roosevelt roosevelt okay it's amazing that, that was honor of the living uh -huh. it's amazing to me how large that abraham lincoln him sitting in that chair is oh yeah that is amazingly <laughs> large you told me one time that it was how many feet 14 feet something oh, ridiculous yeah. how many feet, it's just <laughs> made it's out of marble yeah, look up at it. It yeah. huge. now he may be 14 feet but when you add that seat to it uh -huh. that thing is a monster <laughs> yeah wow. and it's intended for you to be able to see from anywhere and it's you are carved out of marble isn't it yes it's huh. not georgia marble though no uh, where is it from uh, colorado i believe yeah it is colorado yeah. is it well ma many of the monuments you're seeing are actually georgia marble and came from our area so uh that to me is so incredible and when you look at the pillars in front of some of these buildings now if you had to choose what was your favorite thing about dc what would you do again wally what was your favorite thing what would you do again and papa jack what was your favorite thing well my favorite thing was all the war memorials and especially what i consider mine uh -huh. you know but there, I never would have got to take this trip had it not been for these two young men here uh, planning it. And, uh, of course, I wouldn't have got to took it anyway if I'd have known it.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling, and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. The ETC Game of the Week is back again this football season. Watch your local teams go head-to-head -head each week only on ETC TV3. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. So very, very thankful for the Bryson family, for each and every one of you. Thankful for your loyalty, thankful for your friendship, and thankful that we remember an amazing family that's made such a difference in the communities that we serve. I'm going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. I'll be back again soon and hopefully with, hopefully with some good medical news. I hope that you have a great day. Remember, today is about you doing something that blesses someone else. I'll see you again soon.